This is the Elephone S7, a Chinese smartphone that falls under the $250 price range. And I know what you might be thinking, gee, here we go, another Chinese smartphone that's ultra cheap and not worth my money. But bear with me for a moment. This one is certainly one of the most interesting devices I've come across. Now, without a doubt, what stands out immediately with the S7 is the design. It unashamedly steals a lot of its look, if not all of it, from Samsung's own Galaxy S7 Edge, and I'm sure there's no coincidence with the similar naming convention as well, but copied or not copied, you cannot argue that this phone doesn't scream ultra attractive exactly as the Galaxy Edge devices do as well. But before we get too deep into the design, let's go back to the unboxing experience. So straight away you're presented with the device and then we also have the SIM removal tool and paperwork and luckily enough you also get a clear rubberized case in the box which you may find a handy solution to the fingerprint issues that come from this super glossy phone. And then below that we have the smartphone wall plug and micro USB cable. Out of the box, the S7 runs Android Marshmallow 6.0, and on top of that, it comes packed with 4GB of RAM, 64GB of internal storage, upgradable with a micro SD card slot, and the Helio X20 Deca Core chipset. So it's definitely packing a punch under the hood, but in saying that, it's definitely not going to give any smartphone flagships like the Pixel, the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, the HTC 10, or LG's flagships a run for their money in terms of speed and reliability. Perhaps the most intriguing aspect of this device for me anyway, is the near stock Android OS the S7 has running. Normally the first thing you notice when purchasing a Chinese smartphone is the incredibly heavy skins they place on top of Android. And for me, these are often one of the biggest letdowns of these devices. So the fact that Elephone has decided to stick with a virtually vanilla stock experience on their phone is a very welcome addition. Once again, taking a look at what makes this device so intriguing is the design. Like the S7 Edge, the Elephone S7 has a dual edge glass front panel where the glass just kind of flows off the edges, which definitely looks and feels super premium. It's also got a metal frame that wraps itself around the phone and much like the S7 Edge, this phone is quite comfortable to hold in the hand as it's got that similar slight curve on the rear side as well, which helps ergonomically. And speaking of that rear side, whilst it may seem and look like glass at first, it's actually just plastic, but it doesn't really detract from the premium premium feeling much at all, and you'd even probably be hard pressed to really notice that it's plastic. One thing I will say though, is that this phone scratches easily. So if you put yourself in the category of someone who scratches your phone easily, then definitely use the case provided. On the right side, we have both the volume rockers and the power button. And on the left, we have a dual SIM card slot, which also houses the micro SD card slot as well. On the top of the device, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and down the bottom, we have the micro USB port, along with what looks to be stereo speakers, but in fact, only the right side is a speaker and the other is a microphone. Back to the rear of the device, and this is where you'll see the biggest design change from the Galaxy S7. So instead of a large center placed protruding camera, Elephone have placed an iPhone S camera in the corner, and this thing is a 13 megapixel shooter, which we'll chat more about in a bit. Back to the front and up the top, we have a five megapixel front facing camera and a fingerprint sensor down the bottom, which I've found to be fairly reliable in the time that I've used it. It'll get a read probably seven times out of 10, and it has a nice haptic feedback confirming an accurate or incorrect read. This phone also has a 5.5 inch 1080p display, which is actually a really nice display, particularly for only being 1080p. Believe it or not, this thing is actually very sharp and colors are vibrant and well saturated. So if you're looking to consume lots of media, this display will not disappoint. Surprisingly, it also gets very bright and handles direct sunlight very well. In fact, I've had no issues at all using it in direct sunlight. The biggest annoyance I have with this display is that it actually doesn't get very dim. So if you're using this in extreme low light conditions, such as in bed at night, you'll have to use a third party screen filter application to prevent this thing from blinding you. There's also a blue light filter built in, but it's kind of hidden under a few settings, which is a hassle if you're looking to quickly make the change on your display. Like I said before, the software side of things makes this device ultra appealing in my mind as it runs a near vanilla Android OS with very little skinning or bloatware added in by Elephone. There are a few minor add-ons such as the shortcut gesture settings, which allows you to alter which app is triggered by a quick double press on the home button, as well as an intelligent gestures setting page, which allows you to add some extra functionality to your device by using finger gestures such as a double finger slide, which lets you adjust the volume or a three finger slide to take a screenshot. You also have the ability to add an on-screen navigation bar. 
Now, the reason you might find yourself adding on-screen navigation buttons is because there's actually no dedicated back or recent keys to be found on the device. And in fact, everything is triggered by the home button. So pressing the home button makes it act as a regular home press, tapping it triggers the back function and long pressing it triggers the multitasking menu. It sounds more complicated than it is, and trust me, it doesn't take too long to adjust, but even if it does, you can add the on-screen buttons to save you the hassle. Aside from that, battery life on this thing has been good, but not great. Inside, we have a 3000 mAh capacity battery, which meant it got to roughly three hours and 40 minutes of non-stop YouTube videos with the display at full brightness. So if you're a light to medium user, this thing will last you the day, no questions asked. But if you're into heavy gaming and web browsing or downloading lots of applications, best to have a power bank or charger handy nearby. And whilst you can't actually find it advertised anywhere, the phone does have its own fast charging of some sort built in, and this thing seems to charge quite quickly. I was able to go from 1% to nearly 100% in about an hour and 15 minutes, which is fairly quick without breaking any record books at the same time. Moving on to the camera, and the quality is so-so. If you're in good light, then the photos will generally turn out pretty good. There's some fairly obvious post-processing sharpening happening here, but the colors are generally pretty accurate, which is nice. However, the camera shutter is disappointingly quite laggy. So if you're not standing still or if you're in low light, it's really tough to get much quality out of the sensor. Video quality isn't too bad as well, although those looking for 4K resolution will be disappointed. Now taking all of that in and leaving it there, except for the fairly blatant ripoff in design, I would say we have a massive contender right here for a flagship killer device. But there's one fairly hefty issue which I haven't yet mentioned, and that is related to the glass on the top of the display. For one reason or another, and I'm guessing it's related to their desire to create a dual edge phone, the glass is actually sitting a reasonable distance away from the actual touch display panel. What this results in is a less than 100% responsive display. In fact, there are quite a few instances where the phone won't recognize that I've touched it at all. Now, I'll be honest with you, this doesn't make the phone unusable by any stretch. It's still a beautiful phone to hold with great software and a very attractive display, but it does certainly put a damper on the whole experience. The most obvious area in which you'll notice it is when you're typing. Certain letters won't be recognized or triggered, and whilst autocorrect will normally iron out the mistakes, it can still be somewhat frustrating. For me, this phone really does seem like a case of getting really close to something great and then just stumbling slightly at the last hurdle. Everything else about this phone is really good for the low price tag and even though I really want to tell you to go and buy this device without any hesitation, I can't quite bring myself to with full confidence. In saying that, I still think there are a lot of people out there who will really like this device. It looks and feels premium, it has virtually stock Android OS running, and those two features alone make it super interesting in my mind. But anyway, that's it, review finished. Let me know what you guys think of this device down below. A big thank you to Gearbest who sent this phone out to me to review. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.